We're back and we're home in our regular podcast studio um, again today for today's Kicking Back with Hayley and Drisco. My name is Hayley Miller and I'm here with Emma O'Driscoll. Um, before we begin, I know Emma, you wanted to start with this so that we didn't forget to bring it up because it's really, really important to you. So please take it away. What did you want to share with us first up today? Oh, well, on the weekend after the game, I think it was pretty special that I had a little girl come up to me and um, she knew who I was. So great start there. <laughs> But also, she's a, a massive fan of the podcast and um, waits every week for the episode to come out. So, shout out to you. Next time, I'll remember your name. I was say, you didn't even know her name. So I'm really sorry. This is pretty. It's pretty tough. Um, next time, definitely remember yeah. the name. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's great to be back in the studio now. Did you have a pick me up drink, Coke, before the podcast today? Um, How'd you feel? Have you listened back to last week's podcast? Yeah, I think I was definitely a little bit feral last week, so I thought I'd um, take it back a few notches today. And um, nope, I've got training after this, so I just thought I don't want anyone having to deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one wants to deal with that. I did have a juice. Does that count? Oh that no, but it was like a you know cold pressed orange. Not as much sugar as 50 grams. (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, I guess going off of that, I reckon last week's podcast with Steph Kane was the best of Mm. all podcasts we've had so far, including last year's. How did you rate it? Yeah, I reckon. Don't be so harsh. Oh, no. Tia hates you from last, (laughs) last, last week's review. Well, I'm sorry, Tia, but again, you won trademark, so stop complaining. (laughs) Um, no, I thought Kano was really good. I don't think I was very good in the in the podcast. I think Miller kept us on track quite a bit and we're never having chocolate, hot chocolate before a podcast ever again. Yeah, that's not allowed. But I reckon I'm going to give Kano, I'm really just going to go out there and just throw out the nine. Throw I was on the same there. page. I was going nine? for a nine. You were, yeah, yeah, you got to perfect. leave room for improvement because you never know that today's guest may be, may be better. She, mm. she may not, but... Um, we better we better introduce her now. Is we've been waiting a long time to get mm. this person on our um, on our podcast. I was speaking with you just just before, and I don't know if anyone's ever brought this up. Maybe we just don't talk about it. And I can't actually use the word that I want to describe this person's name as. But Kate Starr could be an exotic dan- exotic dancer name. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what do you reckon? That's my job outside of yeah. yeah. Look, it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, of course. It makes sense. Yeah. Now, we won't get into um, into that too far, but are you, are you a bit nervous? Oh, terrified. <laughs> Absolutely terrified. But you're a, you're a real fan of the podcast, aren't Absolute you? Absolute fan. I've listened Perfect. to every episode. Beautiful. Which, yeah. do you have a favourite? Um, favourite this year probably is still Gabby. Favourite okay. all the time is, is Pewie. Oh, yeah. Oh. Pewie's was, that was good. I think we need to get some just the, some more camera action. That's what it was. Mm. Pewies with the um, with the recorder. recorder. It's, not a, flute. it's <laughs> not a flute. It's not a flute. It's not a flute. It's not a flute. Okay. Different. And okay. maybe we should okay. just get a recorder and a flute in here. So maybe so we can hear the difference. Hear the difference. See the difference. Yeah. <laughs> get your guests to play. It's what the public wants. It's what they're crying out for. <laughs> it's what the fans. It's what the fans want. <laughs> or it's just what you need to figure I'm, out I'm what the difference between set. a recorder I and a flute. I dead set. Do we can now, Google that later. Now I think we maybe. need to start on this topic. The weird stuff you make us do. So you're our high performance manager. Tell us what's your role for the fans so they know what you do. What's your role supposed to be at the club? <laughs> you say it like what's it supposed to be? And versus, what do you actually well, do? We'll get, what do I do? We'll get to the what you do. <laughs> what, what are you supposed, what is your role? A short description. Get you ready to play. Well, so you physically, yeah, physically, so you on the physical make side. us fitter, faster, faster stronger, stronger, all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how about the weird things that you make us do? Could I just say on that, yes. the greatest compliment ever, Kano is now my favourite person in the world. What did she say? Funky, quirky, creative. Yeah. Uh, like, excuse me, I came up with the creative. Uh, <laughs> uh, cool words. Cool. They're all cool words. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Um, mm. I. This is my question for you. Yep. Is it like are you going to get five, ten years down the track and then just go, gotchas, made you do some real weird <laughs> stuff. stuff. Yeah. Had no relationship to anything. Yeah, and you go, I can't yet. believe you. I guys actually but, made me do And we just did it a couple of times and no one said anything about it because they were too scared to be like, what's going on? Yeah. But and look at the Insta content I've got. It's huge. Well, we were talking to Brett also and he was saying that sometimes he doesn't even know what to caption what we're doing because it's very unusual. And probably the fans at home. 
probably don't know. Don't understand. But is it fun? Yeah, look, yes and no. 60-40. Yeah. 60-40 okay. fun. Nah, it's, it actually is. It I, is. Some of it, it's a bit much. Some of it, yeah, the, um, that fast football skills one. Oh, boy. Well, that, that was mainly was... because you guys were taking the piss because I put it on Insta of me doing it. Yeah. And then it was like, well, what were Let's you doing? Let's take the piss so out of I Juddie. Said, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. That yeah. was, yeah. That was so, good. No, I, but there is good, there but... is a little bit of theory behind okay, it. Okay, well, tell us, tell, tell us. us the theory. Really briefly. Yeah, briefly. Yeah. So, you know, traditional strength and conditioning, sort of you get strong and then you get powerful and then that power is the power production makes you run faster, blah, 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 blah. But this is sort of turns it on its head and goes, can you use that power production if you're not coordinated? So can you coordinate your upper body, upper body and lower body separately together in efficient movement? Not very well. I Correct. found. <laughs> Correct. Not very well. And I'm so like concentrated on doing it myself that I never watch anyone else. Oh, that's good though. Yeah. yeah. It, it does require a lot of concentration. Mm-hmm. Well, it, yeah, it does. But it's, it's the whole b- body moving. You know, often when we do weights and we lift, mm. it's, we go, okay, this is legs and then this is arms. And so when we're doing all the dancing, yes. fighting monkey stuff. Mm. It's the whole body together. Yeah. And clearly that's confusing for a lot of people. It is. It's hard. It's, Do you not find it hard? It's, yeah, it's incredibly difficult, especially the um, car salesman <laughs> balancing on your toes, moving your arms, not falling over. Um, what else do we do? We Brilliant. do Jenga, the Jenga catching. We've actually, yeah. I think we've warmed to that. the Jenga. Yeah. We really like the Jenga blocks um, around the world. That gets your bum really working. Doesn't it? <laughs> Fires up it your glutes. It does. Yeah, it does. And it your does. calf. Yeah. I get My it. calves are Opposite. massive. One side now. glute, the other side I get calf. Which I really is, don't yeah, know. Weird. When in our um, pre-season um, ACL prevention program, I still don't know what ground rooting is. <laughs> ground rooting and shaking. Ground That's rooting. what one of our things called. <laughs> This yeah. is why everyone goes, what on earth is going on here? Clearly everyone knows what a bit of ground rooting is. <laughs> ground rooting, shaking, AMRAP. <laughs> AMRAP. AMRAP. <laughs> as many rounds as possible. Well, anyone that lifts weights Come knows on, what that is. Oh, goes, I know what that, as many arms. reps as possible was. How are your noodle arms As many going? reps as possible of ground rooting and shaking. <laughs> It was in a wider <laughs> collection of exercises. Did you do your ground rooting is the bigger question. I figured out. I think it's the foot one and then you yes, keep. Yeah, it's the foot one. <laughs> now, going back it's to what much. I said about this potentially oh. being a stitch up and, you know, their cameras being mm. everywhere, this is off, kind of off topic but bringing in the big mother thing. Mm. Now, I. Who's big mother? I don't know. We who don't does? know. Who does? We don't know, but we talked about her a bit last, last week. Mm. Um, we don't know who she mm. actually is, but. This is my like Hayley Miller can't sleep very well, does not a good sleeper. So all the time that we're in Adelaide, didn't sleep a lot. So just laying in bed at night, finding things to keep my oh, mind occupied. You? This is me. Sounds terrible. It is it? terrible. But I this is like where you come up with great ideas like the one I've got here. Okay. Right. So when we become, because we will one day be like full-time athletes, imagine like just picture this. I picture it a lot, actually. Like <laughs> men's team, women's team, and it only came to me after the whole big mother thing. So obviously their big brother, they've got big brother, we've got big mother. <laughs> Over the loudspeaker, you don't even need your schedule. Just <laughs> this is big mother. <laughs> All women's team to the diary room. Could you imagine? Or no, to the gym. <laughs> They're going to put Darren out of his job. Brilliant. Imagine that. How good. You wouldn't even, like you just... Oh, we've been summoned to go to the gym. Go to the gym. That's Everyone a, go, or it could be like, hey, we're going to just go to the podcast Yeah, room. that's good. That's good. It's a dream come true. I know. Make it happen. Fantastic. I think so. So we can start putting that into the plans for five years' time when we become full-time athletes and, yeah, no need for a it's schedule. A great idea. Surely they have like um, fire alarm speaker things everywhere. Yeah. I'd, well, yeah. easy to install. We can, yeah. Why don't we just go a step further and we can microchip you all? And like almost remote control you wherever we want you. Is that when they cut your necks open? Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll cut it at there. I don't yeah. want I don't want a microchip. We're twenty twenty one, not yeah. <laughs> not twenty fifty three thousand. Yeah. <laughs> um, Drisco's been telling me, and I'm not sure if she's upset about it or not, but she's really okay. mentioned it to me a couple of times. <laughs> Are you just having a sip of your soda stream as I ask you a question? Oh my god, you do love the soda stream. I do love it. Mm. I wish it was and- a Coke one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go over the sugar content later. 
Now, Drisco seems to think that you told her that she's got a disability because her arms are too long. Is this true? No. <laughs> Absolutely Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, yes. Yeah, there we go. Yes. There okay, go. there's this book, and I wish I could remember the title, but it's brilliant <laughs> that a lot of elite athletes, mm-hmm. their arm length to their body length is – I can put my arms down at some stage. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely yeah, get yeah. Their arm length – Are we talking Michael Jordan? No, oh, it was yeah, Kobe. NBA, it was Kobe. NBA players, yeah. Um, and Michael Phelps. So – are we saying no, we're not? Emma no. I'm school. up there. <laughs> is up there. there. She's up there with the Michael Phelpses and the Kobe Bryant's of the world. Very twisted. <laughs> it was just a conversation that their arm length is so long that it's disproportionate to their body. That if you had to look at the dimensions, it would be like edging towards the disabled. But it's serving them well in elite sport. <laughs> Drisco ran with that to I am disabled at elite. <laughs> you could have gone with I'm Michael Jordan. Michael Phelps. Yeah, now I now Kobe I am. Bryant. Now that I know the the background behind it, that's an awesome compliment, Kate. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, but it just I says I think it says more on we're all different shapes and sizes, yeah, and it doesn't matter. Let's not label whether your arms are too long if it's a a weakness or a strength, because you never know. What yep, I tell like? Turbo that. What? Where am I on the scale? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be the same waiting. size as your height. Same size as your height, which is what it's meant to be. We could measure. We got yep. a tape. I don't have a tape. We can ask the producer. Did, you have to bring your own pop, props in if you want yeah, them. Ooh. Definitely. Um, let's reflect on the weekend. Our game against the Gold Coast Suns. Forty-nine point win in the end, but it was a bit of a slow start. What are you feeling with that, Drisco? Yeah, I thought it was a. I mean, at halftime, it was good when we got an absolute spray from Coops. But I thought, I thought we needed it, and I thought um, the first half. I wouldn't say it was. Bad. I would say that we were a bit disorganised in the sense, and I think a lot of the players said it was um, quite hectic out there and we took a while to adjust to playing against Gold Coast, I think. Yeah. And Sarah Veria, first ever AFLW goal. I don't think oh. I was on the ground when that happened. I hate it when that happens. I, I, I can't even – I actually – I remember seeing the goal and I remember celebrating the goal, but then I turned around because I was really nervous about getting back to the to my player. But – Amazing. Good job, Sarah. Um, it was wicked and obviously all the forward line got around her. So it's the main thing. They did. Um, but I reckon goal of the day, not mine, because um, <laughs> I did kick a goal. I don't kick many goals, so we're going to talk it up. But the coffee shot um, oh. from the boundary by one and only Roxy Rue. Love that. Amazing. Also because the other team kicked it out of bounds on the full 20 Before. metres the wrong way. Why wasn't that the AFL goal of the round or AFLW goal of the round? Oh, because it's Fremantle. Because I looked at the goal of the round <laughs> and it was... Don't you know we're from Fremantle? We're from WA. Mm. Yeah. Where's that? Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not not sure sure. Victorians do don't know. Do they play football over here? Not sure. Surely um, that was the most brilliant goal. Yeah, it was... Oh, I just looked and I just thought, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen ever. I went and jumped. Yeah. Like the highest I've ever jumped on top of her to just be like, this is... That was the best. And you um, should try that jumping in other circumstances. Yeah, yeah well, I it probably <laughs> would serve. It probably would serve me well to get on top of the pack. I did almost. Oh, you did. I did one. drop 10, 10 grand um, on the weekend. That was good. You get ten grand if you take mark of the year. Oh, I feel like you didn't pick up on that. Yeah, I definitely no, had no way over the yeah, top. Yeah, went <laughs> straight over. We the head. both had anyway, no idea. But um, back to Roxy. Anyway, like, Roxy. How, they how said cool it was Roxy was that jumped on other people's backs. Yeah. So you know, no one even knew it was me. How cool was she kicking that goal though? Like you watch the replay, she just lines up and goes, uh, boom. Okay. I also liked her reaction. She was so excited that the it jumper. actually went in. And the jump. She loves the jump. She loves that. She loves that. That's like a yeah, standard a Roxy mm. Roxy thing. And she was shouting at, to her mum in the crowd. Love that. Kate, what did you think of the game? You want my football opinion? I absolutely do. Yeah. No, I want do your you... opinion on our intensity in the first half. Well, I've um, sent the data to Coops today. Always a terrifying experience. For me, because it's a spreadsheet <laughs> and uh, my math ability versus his, very oh, different. Yeah. <laughs> mathematician. He is oh, a yeah. mathematician. Terrifying. Um, and I was like bawling you guys out, like for the whole first half, like, you know, treacle, they couldn't move slower, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, first quarter stats, quite good. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> on there the, you, on the stats, actually, uh, <laughs> quite really good. good. Do quite you ever good. watch any of the game? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Do you know, the game against Adelaide, so this is my third year with the group, 
And uh, I might have gone home and said, you know, that's the first game of football I've ever enjoyed. Oh. What? Why? It was brilliant to watch. Oh. It was oh. so intense. Like, Is that because our numbers were good? You were watching them go up? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, probably. Oh, there we go. No. There they go. Small ground and a lot of sort of ball that you had to chase and no one yeah. could get a grasp of it. And usually yeah. I would think that that would not be exciting, but it, it was, was just good. the competition and the battle was so great. Um, the weekend's game. Oh, I was like, don't, don't let them dominate you. <laughs> we were trying. It's okay. We heard you and then we picked it up in the second half. Yeah, We thanks. just felt thank, those thank vibes you. from thank you me. and we're like, thank you. shit, we're going to do running on the weekend. I mean, on during the week if yeah. we don't, you know, if we I don't think pick it up. Some of the coaches, uh, they must look at me sometimes when we were at training or games and I talk football talk and they must be like, oh my gosh, she has no idea. She, here she goes. <laughs> when you try and make up, yeah, uh, what make the, up drills. What the hell is she going on about? <laughs> oh, I no. love it when you make up a drill. Thank you. And then you got to try and like change it as everyone goes, well, that's not how we do it in football and that's not how we do it in football. So oh. many, so many rules. I feel <laughs> like that's what Boris is good at though. You might make a drill and then Boris, Boris will modify it he based polishes on... polishes for me. Yeah, for fo- football-ish. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. U-turns. No, it's, it's teamwork. It's on game day, obviously, you do a lot of the, the data stuff. A couple of weeks ago, what happened with the data? Mm. I drowned it. <laughs> it was a bit wet. Yeah, well, that was the derby. because it, it was the was, derby. Yeah, but you didn't figure you needed to put something over the computer for it to not get wet. <laughs> I so did. all the data, what were we at? Running at 27 Ks? And, no. No, no. You, like the first five minutes, 29,000 Ks. <laughs> you ripper. <laughs> you should have left in that. Every, yeah. yeah. Coons would have been happy with that. just ticking over at like thousands per minute. <laughs> oh my God. Thousands of Ks per minute. I was like, ooh. Too much. That was really wet. Mm. Yes. Um, safe to say you fixed that or you just got a new computer? <laughs> no, no, neither. Well, fixed it. Came just... It wasn't live data, so just come back, download it, and we still have the data. Oh. So it's all, it's all fine. Technology is good, isn't it? Sometimes. Um, Kate, so your hockey, your hockey background. Mm-hmm. Talk us through that. Start from the start. No, you don't want to hear about that from the start. No, yeah. I do. Oh, You're uh, an Olympian. Halfway? That is elite. When I was like, hockey, hockey ruse, 1990. <laughs> 1990. Christ, that's a long time I wasn't time even ago. born. <laughs> Were you born? No, no. not even close. Not Boy. even thought of. Brutal. <laughs> Sorry. Kat. So straight after high school, yeah. straight from high school, 1989, I went. Armadale. Oh. Yes, Armadale High. Mm. Favourite subject, sport. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm cutting that question out later then, aren't I? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I went to the AIS, but the AIS for hockey was here. So oh, I didn't yeah. have to go far. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit boring though. I moved like, out though. I lived in, like in residence. Oh, yeah. Okay. At, straight out of high school. So you're 18. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Brutal. And then, so the first year in, we lived at Nilimba, which was an old immigrant hostel in Borragoon. That sounds like fun. Yeah. It was girls on the top floor, boys on the bottom floor. We had these AIS vans, like minivans with AIS I on, can't. on the side. We used to, well, rumours, it doesn't exist anymore, but we used to drive into the city, park our AIS buses outside the nightclub, show our VIP passes, go in, do whatever. (laughs) Party. Yeah, party. So basically, so we were going and talking about your hockey and you've gone straight Straight to, to, we used to drive the AIS (laughs) to the nightclub and then then we used to drive home. So that was my first year in the AIS. So you just partied for the first year. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Why don't we get into hockey in the 1990s? No, it really reflected in my um, performance and, (sighs) let's say, composition after the end of that first year. So you've not always been like this? No. (laughs) Just for that one year. Can you find us some photos? Kate's still fat. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to Hang on. She didn't say she was fat, so now you've called her fat. Hi, BMI. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. I was ridiculous in that first okay, year. Keep going. Anyway, so tidied my act up pretty mm. swiftly after that. So that was 89, went to the 92 Olympics, shocking, didn't play much, was a young upstart. Um, you would have been, what, 20? Yeah. 20, yeah. Mm. That's all right. You got time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then after that, we came back, we got a new coach, Rick Charlesworth became our coach and we, we became pretty much full-time athletes. I read about him in a book once. Yeah. He was good. Yeah, he was great. He was a good coach. Good. Was a great coach, great man. Mm. Like really lucky to have him still as part of my life. Um, so then from there, we went from pretty much, we had a rocky year, 93, I think we did okay. But from 94 to 2000, we then 
only lost one major tournament. And did you come second? Yeah, we did. Hmm. The second first person to lose. Yeah. But so during that time we won two Olympics, two World Cups, six Champions Trophy, Commonwealth Games. It's insane. And look, not taking anything away from your 11 wins, but I think we won like something like 270 games. Oh my god! In a row. Yeah. We've, we'll get there. Yeah, eventually. We're just at the start. <laughs> We've only got 20 years to we do it. We also yeah. only play nine games yeah, nine a season. Nine games a season. So, uh, <laughs> girls, when we've, when we've passed on, um, yeah. and they'll, they'll still be going. They're still winning. <laughs> They're just still <laughs> winning. <laughs> We're like 99. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, girls. Keep going, girls. Oh, no. You're almost at Kate Stars record. But and it was a really special time in sport. So during that time we had the Sydney Olympics. So extra funding, extra resources, um, just a really amazing time to be in sport. So That's awesome. Do you have any, like, or do you have a one, I guess a one medal or one championship or whatever you call them, mm. tournament win that is more special than any of the others? Olympics I, more so than others? Um, I would say Olympics would be yeah. the top, but people often <laughs> ask... <laughs> That was a leading question. Yeah. The Olympics was the best, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was how I had bum, bum. said their question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drisco and I have figured out there's uh, some sound effects sound there effects. and I'm so excited. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a good one. Again. <laughs> I should leave it. <laughs> <laughs> third time and third time lucky. We got it. Oh um, boy. But people often ask for the first, so the first Olympic medal. So I went to 92, which was my first Olympics, and we came fifth. Not great. We were number one in the world. You'd call that an epic fail, really. Mm. Um, then went to 96 in Atlanta, and we won. And then 96, that was my birth, birth year. So yeah, great. We so. finally got there. Yeah, I'm at my second Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you're still not born? Still not born. No. <laughs> and Mim's still got like five or six years. Yeah. <laughs> How, old well, are How old do you feel right now? Yeah, old. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. What did you want to go to? 2000 Olympics. Okay. Um, I was born. It, I was going to say, <laughs> Mim's probably you're still not born. No, oh, Mim, Mim, you're 2001. I'm you were 2000. in the 2000s. You were both in the 2000s. Yeah. So Millennial, like year of the thing. dragon, like, baby. People aren't born in the 2000s. <laughs> no, it's weird. exactly. Anyway. Wow, ouch. Talk That's... to us about the red um, bandana that you used to play in. It's brilliant. It's red and it had little stars all over it. Did you have oh. it every, was that your thing? Yeah. Every every game? Yeah. The whole 200 and something, something that something, you won something. in a row? Uh, no. That's pro- there was a green one. Oh, okay. But you always wore a bandana. To play in, yeah. Was it ever a game that you didn't? Is that even allowed now? Well, clearly. Like, yeah, I think it's, it's still not allowed. Like, like how big was the bandana? Like I'm I'm just picturing these big like bikey have, have you not Googled bandana? I've seen their photos we've posted in the group. <laughs> yeah, not not the group that the staff are in, the other group. Yeah. The players yeah. only one. <laughs> the players only group. <laughs> yeah, that one. There may have been no, photos I haven't, in there before. It's not a contact sport, so I'm not getting tackled or hit in the head. Oh, there we go. There it is. Oh, look. Kate, look at your pipes. (laughs) They're massive. There's time to get those noodles. (laughs) Yeah, there is. It gives me hope. (laughs) That's why you've got to do noodle group things. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I actually hell like it. We're talking about the bandana. Yeah. um, Yeah. (laughs) I I like the bandana. Maybe we'll have to implement that into our- Maybe if you wore a bandana, you'd have, your pipes would look better. I'd have Olympic medals. All and, that. Well, maybe not in this. And sport. a sweatband that wouldn't go astray. No, it's, I don't know if you're like you can't even have plaits in AFL, let alone a bloody oh, sweatband. I've said band. this. I don't know if I can say that, but I've said this about like AFL, which is an Australian sport, and then hockey, FIH is our international body. I, AFL seem to have more rules for a local sport than a sport that's played all around the world. Yeah. What about your experience from moving to from a playing career to like? S and C or coaching? Why? What was that always your sort of pathway? Did you want to do mm. that whilst you were still playing? No, no, no. Tell us through no. that. Talk she us was an it. exotic dancer. Plan, know yeah, this, planned this in this life with a name like Kate Star. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can. I never really had a plan. I, did I've you just? Been, did you go into coaching straight after playing, yeah, or did you have some years it. off? I had some years off. I just think I've been incredibly lucky to sort of have fallen on my feet 
a lot of times, a few times. So straight from playing, I moved to America and opened a cafe in San Diego. Oh, that cool. is so random. No one knows that about you. Yeah, That's good on cool. good on you. It's called. Oh, I was like, I was like, are I was like, you? Onya, A-I-N-E? Are you saying, no, are you saying good on you for not yeah. knowing? Yeah, I was good like, on oh, you. Oh, shit. Yeah, no. I was, that's what it's called. Epps and Juddy went good there when you. they went on their oh. honeymoon. Is it still yours or you sold it? I sold it. Sold it. I sold, sold it. it. Yeah. You sold it off. And now it's like, oh, now it's much bigger and better than when I owned it. When that's I owned it, it was so just a cafe. Cool. And but now you started it. Yeah. So it's yours. Well, with my partner at the time. It's yours. It's mine. Yes. Damn it, it's mine. It's yours. So you just worked in the cafe then? Well, we set it up. Yeah, okay. Which I love. And then you go, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've set it up. I kind of I don't really want this anymore. I, f- I figured out during that time, I loved all that process of setting up something. Yeah. And strangely, having your rules about, <laughs> about what I you love should rules. do. Yeah, you I love did them. say you like rules. And um, like how it should run and how it should all be. But then working there, I was like, well, this isn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Were you like a barista? Yeah. yeah. The manager? Yeah. Just walk around and look important. All those things. Mm. So much the same right. as I do here. I feel like that, would, yeah. <laughs> oh, that really suits you just walking around. Bossing you people You should around. do the warm-up today and yes. you are going to do this. So you do and the I'm coffee gonna watch and you. you do the sandwiches. Delegating, yeah. yeah. She's you good at that. Good at um, the delegating. You did take your first warm-up uh, last week. I did. Of the whole entire season. season. Yeah. Mm. I like Wasn't that good? <laughs> Asked you. Oh, that's a quick. That's, that's just, a, I'm just sure way to out. get yourself running laps <laughs> yeah. tonight. Yeah. I've got to increase my percentage in the podcast game, so right. I'm getting up to the 15%. Not the way to do mark. it. <laughs> on, I Kate, did think. Like look, me. what happens on the podcast stays on the podcast. Right. Yeah, exactly. You, Friendly you, banter. You mm-hmm. can't make us do a 2K mm-hmm. tonight. Uh, main differences between hockey and football in terms of preparing athletes. Uh, very little. The, the amount of contact you guys have, so maybe upper body strength more so, but in ter- it's a running sport, um, True. an intermittent running sport. Mm. So from my perspective, very little. You guys are, are stronger and I want you to be a little bit stronger, but same, same. Same, same. Um, now I've heard you were, I'm not going to say mean, but we'll say you were a tough hockey coach from a from a friend of mine. Oh, oh. That's Sorry, a that's a fine. Sorry. That was take it, Trisco. Goes, take your call. Just take your call. No, it's okay. We'll, hung just up. Take it we'll wait. Place. I've just hung up on my mum for you guys. Seriously. <laughs> we'll I thought yeah, it was your Nana. Mum. We'll <laughs> you would answer. Pretend it's your mum. Um, back to the question. Yeah. A friend of mine said you're quite tough. Who's as your friend? A, as a hockey coach. <laughs> Toey. <laughs> Do you know who it is? <laughs> if they I call all you, call me Toey. Oh, Georgie Parker. Georgie Parker. Georgie Parker. She said you were a very tough, tough hockey coach. Are you a tougher hockey coach versus footy coach? Which one? Because I feel like you you soften as you go along. <laughs> the, but the same with Changes hockey. day like, to day, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> don't know which one you're going to get, but. <laughs> Layla. Do we know who Layla is? Yeah, tears. Um, I was going to say, um, it's someone's. Keep tears. up with your podcast, yeah. you two. Well, you remember everything. Um, yeah, she does. No, I think. Pretty much the same in hockey. I think the hockey girls would say the same, start sort of tough and then soften, but sort of semi-intentional. Yeah, you sort can't be set soft. Set, Stamp your authority. Well, I wouldn't listen I, to you if you were soft. I would say set the culture, set the sort of standards and expectations yeah. that you want mm-hmm. and then once the athletes go, oh, we're going to actually operate here, mm. we're not going to operate mm. here and be done with it, then you guys start operating at this level and then I walk around and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you've really set it up well. I remember when you first came in and um, I was unfortunately injured at the time and was for a, a decent amount of time and I was too scared to, <laughs> to say I was sick of doing assault bike sessions that I did for about f- five weeks three times a week yeah. and then I finally came to you and was like, Kate, um, can I please do something different other than an assault bike session? And you were no. like, oh, no. She was actually like, oh, of course, let's go oh. and find something else. I was like, why did I not say this three <laughs> Wait, weeks? <laughs> three weeks ago I could have said this. Um, but, yeah, you do often uh, <clears throat> shout from the from the other side. No. Of- <clears throat> but more. Go. What? Give us a oh, impersonation. A no, that's a serious no. Good? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah a that's when you mean it. It's a pretty good no. I remember last year, my first year, Miller and I were partners in something. So glad Miller's been here for a while. 
And like I kind of knew what to expect with the UK. I just knew. Did you? She's going to be a tough egg to crack this one. <laughs> Anyways, and um, I was doing a game with Miller and you ripped me. Absolutely ripped. Swear word and all in there. Like, oh. Like you, you you, did. Oh. And at the time I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what I was actually doing. <laughs> and so Miller just stepped in front and she just turned around and said, Kate, Soften up a little. She's not quite sure. Why don't you try helping her rather than yelling at her? Miller has got an inner bitch, hasn't she? Yeah, she does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you're terrified, was, of Miller. <laughs> it was really good. You're and picking then, on my teammate, and it felt like the right time. Yeah, it was good to just say Leadership. help her. Yep, she needed. So, help. and you were you doing the same thing? You're setting the expectation of where mm. you want it early, and then people are operating at that level of expectation, mm. and now you don't have to say anything anymore. Yeah, what to Driscoll or to you? Are we both doing what you want? Oh, I don't need <laughs> Miller to stand up and for me so anymore. Here I am on the food chain, right up here. <laughs> <laughs> all of my people, <laughs> all my people, all my people down here. But no, I think it's the same with it's like true. everyone, like with your teammates. It doesn't matter who you are. No, you set your expectation. Absolutely. Like so, I mean, even if one of the like the youngies come in and has, well, this is how I operate and this is my level, and then people go, oh well, that's cool. We'll, that's where we'll do it. Yeah. I I like that, and I, you are very much a hard ass, but then at the same time you're like a little mushy marshmallow. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You just we won't tell it. Oh, sorry, don't tell anyone. No, but that. she's more just about the banter. You just give it back to her. Yeah, true. Level of respect, but pick, I pick your time and day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't pick the wrong day. Not on a Monday when you're Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> don't pick the wrong day. <laughs> I always think I'm pretty simple. Like if you try, we'll get on fine. Yeah. If you're like, excuses. If you don't you've got like. excuses, you lack professionalism and a bit of inner drive, we're going to clash a bit. That's fair from a high performance manager. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. You would want that. Yeah. Now, how did you find your way into becoming the high performance manager at Frio? Your relationship with Coops? No. That's what's written on here. And yeah. Look, that could be taken well, that's... many ways. Yeah. So please, hey, Josie, please just... just <laughs> we know you're an exotic dancer, but we don't want to know about the past <laughs> <laughs> Please explain. Well, I really love little Peyton a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually wasn't anything to do with Coops. I didn't oh. know Coops before um, I started here. I knew Jason Weber, who oh, was yeah. the men's high performance um, manager. I had done some work with UWA in their research department with Jackie Alderson, who is their biomechanist. And Jason and I sort of had a mutual friend in Jackie and I had coached in um, the UK for a year after the 96 Olympics, which was an absolute disaster. So I, I went away and tail between my legs and coached in the UK for a year and came back and Jackie and Jace were talking and said, oh, do you want to come in and, uh, just have a chat and I said yeah I'll come in and have a chat with Jace and I, I was pretty much like leaving the house and Jace is like yeah the chat's kind of an interview I'm like oh, cool <laughs> great so is that and that's how it, and, and that's so how it went Coops was there that's the first oh, time okay. I, I met him how like obviously from that point mm -hmm. then you were put into the program was it an easy transition like obviously you're learning to work with all different people and I feel like you make it work really well I feel like this is where the conversation of relationship with Coops was supposed to go right but how yeah, yeah, like yeah. how do you make it work um is there times when you don't get along that's the question for with you with Coops yeah is it or time with any of them Oh, I think with <laughs> all of us there's times where we don't agree but that doesn't mean we don't get along but Making it work in the transition, the, these guys have been the best, easiest, most amazing staff They're good. to work That's with. Good, yeah, yeah, all of them. But I think, you know, from the top, Coops drives that. And I've said, like, I wouldn't be in elite sport if it wasn't for Trent. I wouldn't have come back into elite sport. I was disillusioned with it. Um, I was like, nah, this is – I was basically like, this is bullshit. And mm -hmm. then you meet someone like Trent who – is just a solid human being. And so when I first came in, it was within a week and it was just the two of us basically who were employed sort of in the coaching realm and Wado was here, but it was sort of just Trent and I. and we're having um, a big transition. Yeah, it was a big transition, yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember one of the first sessions we had and 
we were, we were chatting and we didn't know each other. And I had, I knew nothing about football, obviously, but I'd read things in the paper about AFL coaches, um, AFLW coaches and women coaches. And I probably confrontra- confrontra- confrontationally said to Coops, um, again, like, are there any women on staff? Like, what do you think about AFLW coaches? And he sort of said to me, oh, you know, at the moment I don't think that there's anyone in WA that's probably head coach material, to which I was ready to. (laughs) And he said, look, but if we don't start now, there never will be. And I was just like, oh, wow, this guy is amazing. And I've had tears telling this story before because then I watched Trent for the next year Mm. with um, Webby and Amy and the respect that he shows female, co- everyone, he shows everyone respect. But his, I watched his interaction and coming from some environments where head coaches don't interact with their assistants like that, I've just stood back a couple of times and gone, holy shit. What a man. This, yeah. We what don't do want about it. <laughs> like people wouldn't, probably don't know that. Well, obviously um, Cotters was a player and then moved into that coaching role. So she hadn't had a lot of coaching experience prior to coming into a role in an AFLW club as an assistant coach and taking a whole line. Mm. Like that's a massive step. And the same as as Webby, she also is in the same sort of situation. So both of them were really, really raw to coaching. Yeah. And the way that they make it work, work is, is absolutely amazing. Incredible. And he just gives, I think he just gives them the license to do what they, they know how to play football. They've watched a lot of football. They've either played a lot of football. Um, Webby's played a little bit of footy, but watched a lot of footy Um obviously with, with her husband, Mark. So, um, yeah, having the license to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, as you said, the license, the freedom and the respect. Like I've mm. heard them in conversation and, you know, they might nut things out, but in the end it's a decision that they've all come to and everyone's been able to have their opinion. But Absolutely. then year two comes, Trent and I are back in like the room, in the war room, and I'm like, well, what are you going to do about your sisters? They're both pregnant. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. How dare they? Exactly. <clears throat> Trent's response straight off the bat was, well, I'm going to keep them. They're pregnant. There's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. That will be a good example to AFL. And I was just like, oh, my oh, God. Like, legend. We love Big Peyton. We, we love, love that. Big Peyton. Big Peyton Equality. is the best. So, I'm such a feminist, though. So, I mean, who isn't these days? <laughs> I play women's footy. I'm going to be a feminist. Okay, moving on from that. Um, oh, do you yeah. have some quick fire questions good. for us, Up Emma? to me. Perfect. It's your time. 15%. Here right. we go. Here we go. Kate Starr. Favourite player on the team? I can't say Ooh. that. You. Perfect. Great That's answer. Rude. And no, you. She doesn't have a favourite. <laughs> and you. Everyone's. It so depends on the day. Sometimes you all yeah. piss me off. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's like half the group. Sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's, but the backs you are have always an inside in. Joe. You're yeah. always You're like the back. It's situationally defined, I think. Okay. But you don't like the forwards? <laughs> Some days. <laughs> Something you are terrible at. This is an interesting one. Spanish. Oh, good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Like, because everyone else is real good at it. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> at least she's tried it. I thought this was quick fire. The worst player in the gym. <laughs> the worst player in the gym. You don't play gym. <laughs> well, <laughs> worst player on the team. In the gym. In the gym. Sp- well, who's the worst in the spaghetti club? No, you don't have, just because you're in the spaghetti club doesn't mean you're the worst. Oh. There's, well, yeah. I don't know. Again, it's day by day. Some people Who just Who complains have... the most? You. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's the biggest lie. How many more questions you got? Come on. <sighs> Favourite holiday destination? That I've been to or that I want to go to? You're making this long. <laughs> you. I've just heard others ask that <laughs> question. <laughs> You're making this long, quick fire. Favourite destination I've been to, Israel. Place I want to go, uh, Norway. Good. What, who <laughs> features the most on your Instagram posts? Turbo. Because she's not human. I would have said Otto. Oh, oh, oh we yeah. can go Otto? The cat. Okay. Well, well, he's young and he's got a long time to live. <laughs> Everyone's favourite question. I know you went to Armadale. I don't care. But what... <laughs> Is your favourite subject back in school besides sport? English lit. Oh, great. Where's the applause? <laughs> oh, you even knew. I was so waiting for that. So when I, I was in year wrong. 12, 
or year 11 and 12 at uh, Cecil Andrews High School, shout out, um, there was probably only, I'm going to say, 10 of us that went to upper school, <laughs> that went to year Ooh. 11 and 12. So I was the only person in the school that did both sports and English lit. There you go. So I would go to English lit classes and go to class, but for phys ed classes, I would just be on my own in a room and like do my lessons or go home. <laughs> and then every couple of weeks I'd turn up to the sport class and do the practical stuff with a group. But mostly I'd go to English lit class and just do phys ed studies on my own. Is that where you came up with all these oh, weird, yeah. funky ideas yeah. that you can do by yourself? Like your tool thing, yeah, your dancing. No. Yeah, no, but no, no, definitely no that not. was a long way. Is that where it started? It, it started it, like the somewhere seed deep, was somewhere <laughs> deep down in there. Yeah, you exactly. knew that was going to be your calling. Yeah. Three words to describe Trent Cooper: intelligent, emotionally, and smarts wise, like smart guy. Um, inclusive. I just think no one in this group gets left behind and loyal. Good. And Thank you. let's see if this matches answers from previous guests. Three words to describe yourself, Kate Starr. So <laughs> tough, weird, out there, quirky, creative, funky. And She's remembered an, everyone's. And a nice person. She's remembered everyone's. So which, what would you just... What would you use to describe yourself? No, I've already all of said, those. yeah, all of those. I've already said Kano, ultimate. Yeah. Ultimate like compliment. That yeah. Good. Funky, Perfect. quirky, creative. She'll never run laps again. No, beautiful. That's fantastic. Lucky hair. Yeah. <laughs> we should have said more nice stuff. We Damn could have it. got away with a lot. No. Going back to a couple of things, um, I guess your role wise, you obviously, we spoke about you um, tracking GPS numbers and what whatnot. What are you looking for? in the team just for like people think about what you look for in your gps numbers obviously k's and stuff like that mm -hmm. but there's a lot more to it than just k's in the gps yeah and that's a discussion it's what i look for but it's also a discussion with the coaches and a situation between what what opposition we're playing and how we want to play and that sort of thing and different people and their so, roles as well yeah like not everyone's okay. going to run Ten time case. out on that though. So when I first came in and I had a say not knowing football and everyone is like special positions or something, that was a thing. <laughs> I haven't heard that lately though. And like the midfields and the backs and like you the forwards no and they'll all run different and they don't have to run as much. And they and so then I did the, my first year I collected the data and I was just like, you guys are kidding yourself. For a start, there's no one with that bigger physical difference, sorry, Mim, that can't run fast and long. You know, we don't have some giants that are physically incapable. And I go, like, you look at basketball players, they can run. And mm. yet we go, oh, no, she's too tall to run. And I'm like, no, she's not. They, I can run with these less. long arms. <laughs> you don't run your arms, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but, it. They just take less steps. Well, yeah. Once they get going, they're okay. But you look at someone like Anya when she's like, a, she can get moving pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. So I looked at the data first season and went, actually, you guys, Are there's wrong. not that much difference positionally. So stop saying, oh, forwards, sorry. Don't just stand out there and kick goals. <laughs> Do some work. You need to be able to match the amount of work that your defenders can do or outrun them or do some work to help the team. So mm. this is where my footy comes in. I'm like, yeah. create space, <laughs> yeah. press harder, <laughs> like do other things and just stand there and lead. Um, so I look at a bit of that and then we do look at like efficiency. So quarter by quarter, like in the last quarter, has it gone down? Has it gone up? Do we need to run? That's the other thing. Sometimes Do we, do we need to run in the last quarter? But that, these questions we ask, it's like sometimes the data is low and it's like, oh, shocking data is low. But we're like, well, that's cool because I mean, we didn't, didn't, that, yeah. didn't need, need or you potentially didn't need, need to, to do as much work, yeah, which but, means we're in a good spot. Yeah. Makes sense. But I'm pretty much of the theory that we get to a position, and you guys know how hard the off-season program is, that we should be at a position that any game we play, we've, we've done more and we've catered for it. So... Um, that's sort of the model I base it, mm. base our training on and like you guys see it training, there's always 
patches of intensity, even when we're in season. Yes. There's training sessions where we have like 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes where you go hard, even in the training before we mm. play. We yeah. still have those those bits where we go hard. Don't wrap me up, Miller. Continue. No, finished. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say don't wrap me up and then finish. I'm just playing on when you sound like you're ready yeah, to no, finish. Okay. I'm getting good at this yeah. thing, right. wrapping people up. Okay. All right. Well, I wanted to ask another question about okay. the GPS okay. and you're just rambling. Go, go. Um, <laughs> re- <laughs> record distance, it says someone, Turbo, Turbo, obviously. What's her record distance in a game? In a game? Nine-ish, nine and a half maybe. Yeah. Oh, this week good. she did nine, uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Mm. So, yeah. That's pretty, she's pretty decent. Mm. Um, and the fastest numbers recorded. I know we've had it sometimes when the GPS Yeah, are. when people drive home with them. Yeah, 100, 100 k's <laughs> an hour. Like, wow, oh. they were hitting some speed. That's 31, 32. That's pretty decent. Yeah. But, you know, that's like a slow car. <laughs> In a school zone. Yeah, that's, that's going through a school zone. Yeah. I love that. Um, and ACL prevention, pre-game or and training, mm. um, why is it so obviously – it's important because there's so many injuries um, in women's sport and football, particularly. Mm. Um, talk us about, talk us through, I guess, your thoughts on that. It's just, I think it's so important because ACLs are so sad. Mm. It's, yes. Um, we're fighting an uphill battle with, um, I think it's less and less, but with athletes historically coming in underprepared and probably not being strong enough. And I think even in my first year, I was like, well, this is interesting because you've got some athletes that are super prepared and then some aren't and then they clash and it's like yeah. a Mack truck running into like a mini and <laughs> you know, that's, that's got to hurt. Well, that must be hard to sort of try and, yeah, make it tailored to both, both, both groups. Both groups. Yeah. Especially yeah. in a sport like AFL where a lot of girls haven't played this sport their whole entire mm, yeah. life, whereas with hockey, probably most of them played played yeah. from when they were, they were young. little, little, yeah. um, and footy, you know, yeah, everyone's come from netball or something else. But now um, we see that changing for the first time sort mm. of with girls starting to play Even since this year, years old. Um, yeah. had come not from other sports but yeah. from, come from underpinning footy programs, yeah. which is awesome. It makes a huge difference. But uh, you asked earlier about the difference with footy, I guess, I was, and I still look away when I'm on the side, like the contact from any direction, it really hard to prepare for mm-hmm. and really pr- hard to prepare athletes for. So we look at getting you guys stronger, but then also being able to move well and fall well. Mm-hmm. And that's like often when I get to speak about you guys in our program, whenever I do, like Hannah has made a huge impact on on what we do and how we fall. And maybe that, maybe it is, maybe it's not directly related to a decrease in our ACLs, but it is in our concussion rates. But mm. now you guys, you're stronger and you're, I think you have better control yeah, over your protect body ourselves better. and you know how to fall better. Yeah, And we've all got bruises from our GPS yes. smashing into the back of our necks as we do yeah. forward I rolls and backward, backward rolls. rolls. But I think that's everyone's least favourite part, but I can understand why we do it. It's actually an ACL today, to tell the oh, truth. Oh, thank God. Can't wait. Yeah. I yeah. get We'll put them in late. We'll put them in late. I also want to yeah. throw up every time we yeah. do that. I get dizzy. Concussion <laughs> I get dizzy. From the GPS. Yeah. <laughs> concussion from the From rolling. my neck. <laughs> <laughs> my neck. Yeah. My neck so it's got a kink in my neck all the time. Um, Travelling with the team. What's your favourite part about? No. <laughs> with the kids too. <laughs> I don't know if it, you all should follow me by now oh, on um, Instagram. No. You should. Follow me on Instagram for the next time we have to go away because I'll get some more content of Kate trying to interact with the children. But <laughs> poor Leo. He was loving it. No, he well, cried. He cried after. Okay, he did cry. Yeah. <laughs> but I also think he had just pooped his pants as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he did that because of the dancing <laughs> or he just needed to go. So there's <laughs> oh. a lot of factors involved there. There was a lot of interpretive dance and his face was like... What, what on <laughs> earth is this lady doing? But did you see the one that I posted a couple of days later where we did game activation and we were doing the coordination and in the park? It. And oh, he was just sitting there. Oh, there in the front. Yeah, that was so cute. <laughs> he had no idea what no, was going exactly. on behind him. <laughs> exactly. Although Nate quite enjoyed your He uh, enjoyed dancing. his dance, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. So, you know, you get 
one. F- fitty, fitty. One, one. Yeah. Yeah, 50, 50. Win some, you lose some. <laughs> the kids are a great um, – I was, in all seriousness, I was thinking about this when we got home because, like, when I coached, there was no one in the team that had kids, but post that there was an athlete, Jodie Kenny, who toured for a little bit with, with a kid and I wasn't involved and I don't really know how that went, but I'm not – sure knowing the environments around hockey that it could have gone any any better than we had it in our group i think the kids being around are a real like addition it's the They're best awesome. part yeah, to so our good. to our group and it keeps children like maggie occupied <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i don't think she talked to anyone but 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 leo yeah the whole entire time he was on her level Poor leo she was on his He's level like, <laughs> but they do bring something and it brings out characteristics in people that you don't see if you don't have kids. The and baby it, voice. Yeah. But it's just nice too that it's good. Yeah, you know, the kids really. get passed around yeah. and everyone's involved and I think Everyone it's I definitely it. agree. Yeah. I think it's nice. Well it's not we have each year it's like someone needs to have a child because Well that's well, a big ask. Yeah, well, yeah, well, whose we, contract is that in? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, but Freo need to make it work because <laughs> no Well last year we had Millie, are you trying to tell us something? Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. maybe it's my time. <laughs> well, did you sign your contract? <laughs> did you read it? <laughs> um, now, are you trying to take the media team's job flat out? Are you trying? Yes. Yeah. Is that where you're trying to go? Is well, that your next? Are you trying to put them both together? So, do you want to still be high performance manager, or are you making a push to move to media? Is there high performance media? Well, we could make it. We could make it a thing. So that M need could to. start she for anything, it couldn't it? High performance <laughs> manager, media, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We'll just like hyphen it. Yes. Same, same could mean either. No, it's good because I feel like sometimes I never get tagged in the Freo photos. Kate or they don't take me. one of you. Oh, they don't. Yeah, yeah. I never get actually photos. Yeah. Yeah. Kate <laughs> takes some of me and then she makes sure I'm tagged so I can put it on my story as well, obviously. She's professional like that. Yeah. She's absolute, thinking of everyone. Absolute pro. Yeah. Yeah. Through the whole team, I try to get everyone yeah, exactly. on my media. I like it. Yeah. They could learn a bit. <laughs> there, was a, there was some eyes there at uh, Brett's. No, um, on the media team though, I've, I've said to the media team, I reckon this year they've upped the game. Some of the content's been really good. Um, I would hope so. It's the, they're getting paid for it. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Um, all right. Our Brisbane Brisbane game this week, Indigenous um, round. Mm. First, obviously us, v third on the ladder. Um, pretty excited for this clash because I think it will be our, although Adelaide beat Brisbane on the weekend, it was a pretty close game and I think Brisbane fell short like it was their their game that they lost rather than Adelaide's that they won um what are we thinking what are you thinking of the Lions so far I think they're really sharp I think they're looking really good um they look really fit and I think their skills are amazing I think they're yeah, they've got a lot of dangerous forwards, which I'm quite scared about, but good to end on Pretty, that. Pretty um, <laughs> special day in the calendar being um, Indigenous mm. round and we'll run out in our Indigenous um, jumpers. Going back to the smoking ceremony, now I know you really love the smoking ceremony. Talk us through why that means so much to you, Kate. I do love it. Mm. So I really love it. Um, I think it is a throwback from coming from hockey where – and my education and growing up and sort of the the era that I grew up in where there was no um, cultural awareness Mm. and I knew really, really very little um, about Aboriginal stories and Aboriginal cultures and or culture and you get the periphery that you sort of everyone knows but I feel that coming into Frio that you get a real education and you, you get drawn in and like I've said to Colleen before that I'm stunned at... Aboriginal people's willingness to bring mm, to bring us in their, yeah. and wanting us to be part of their really special ceremonies and for us to learn about their cultures because you know, in a lot of respects they've got every right to say it's for sure enough. yeah, it's yeah. Our thing yeah, yeah it's our thing and we want want to keep it but I love it that they they want to bring us in and they want it's, to share so much and I feel like I've learned so much yeah and I just love that whole connection to the country yeah. and that feeling that country is is part of you and you're part of country um and I think that's really special Aboriginal non-Aboriginal that we can we can share that as yeah. people mm. and I, I think agree. I love that Frio does it really really well too in the way that they sort of educate everyone without you know it's not forced upon you it, you're just invited like you said you're just invited to like enjoy 
that it's experience really and learn a lot. And you would learn so much more. Like we did, you know, Indigenous studies and things at school, but to actually go to a smoking ceremony and learn it in the mm. way of actually being there and feeling, like I said, feeling the feelings that you get from being at a smoking ceremony I think a lot of people wouldn't understand what that is like. So for anyone who's listening to the podcast for next year, because I know that we would do it again next year, um, please do come down because it is a very, very special moment for us as a team. But I think when everyone, anyone who's ever come down to it Mm. um, have said it's a really, really moving um, experience. So I really look forward to Indigenous Round um, this week and even better that we get to have it on our home home soil where we did our smoking ceremony. So it's going to be yep. really, really powerful. Um, but that brings us to the end of today's show. Kate, you made it through. Yeah, uh, it wasn't so bad. Didn't, no, not you guys so were nice. Yeah, people have said it's been like nice. We need to be me- meaner. <laughs> no, I like it. It's just a chat. It's just a chat, isn't yeah, it? It's just a chat. Yeah. I was expecting way worse. Expecting, yeah, people expecting didn't more. send in. They were too scared, I think. Yeah, I think people get a bit scared that they're going to have to... There'd be consequences. Yeah. 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 It's life, quite isn't quite it? Quite it's always <laughs> there's, there's consequences if you write in a, uh, a uh, bit of dirt on, yeah. on Kate Star. Or maybe there isn't any. Uh, I don't know. I Good chat. Let's I go. think there's some out there. <laughs> So game on the weekend, we just spoke about it. Tickets are on sale. So um, grab your tickets and we'll see you all down at Freo Oval on Saturday. All right, and we'll see you next week for the next podcast. Bye.